another installment of the Mecca Podcast. I'm Mark Williams, and today we're in the University of Connecticut. And we're luckily to run into one of the godfathers of basketball training, Mr. Gannon Baker. And he's going to talk to you guys about basically about the training um, from back in the days and then the current state of um, basketball training and then how we as, a, as, a, as an industry can move forward and, and help more basketball players become better basketball players and better teammates become better teammates. Welcome to our show, man. Hey. I'm not the godfather, I'm not that old. Yeah, all right. And I'm lucky to be here with you, man. You, you opened up a gym for me in uh, New York City way back in the day for right. the summer, man, without even knowing me. So I'm, right. always, I'm always grateful for that. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. That, was a, that was a fun time, actually. We had Great a Great time. We, it was hot in there. Well, you mean, that's New York City. Yeah, oh, my God, it was hot. You got a love ball to go through the hot and the sweat and the dirt and the roaches. But right. You know, you got a bunch of gym rats. Yeah. So I was, I was in heaven. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. We had a couple of people there. We were working hard, but anyway, that was a couple of years ago. And and I said that you're the Godfather primarily because um, if you look at YouTube, you're probably one of the first to take advantage of YouTube and that new medium as far as the social media is concerned. What made you jump on that that that, that bandwagon early as far as getting your message out there? Well, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, it was what, probably wasn't my idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always had a couple of business managers or CEOs run the business side of my business because number one, they were probably, they were probably smarter than me. Mm -hmm. I know the group I have now, uh, Mihai and his team are smarter than me. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I really don't like doing. I have only so much time during the day. Right. So I gotta have family development, I gotta have my spiritual development, and I gotta have my self-development. So my self-development is I'm, I'm working on my body, I'm working mm -hmm. on my game, I'm working on my mind, mm -hmm. my family. You know, I have a, I had a wife, now I have a wife and three kids. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, um, my spiritual development. I wake up early, right. pray late. So I have a relationship with my life source, which mm -hmm. is the good Lord. And, um, there's no bit for me. I'm, I'm blessed enough that I can make enough income where I can just pay people to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's called, uh, I had time freedom and financial freedom. Now, when I first started, I did. Mm -hmm. But one of my goals was to create time where I can have the choice to spend it. I, I don't have anybody else telling me how to spend that time. Right. And number two, if I have a little money, I'm going to be able to spend it the way I want. And so for anybody in any industry, those should be your two goals because uh, you can do a lot with time. Right. And money won't make you happy, happy but money can change the situation. Okay. It can change the situation. <laughs> it can change the family. Right. Um, I think that was one of the best things that I've seen back in the days. Like your videos were like inspirational to those that are just coming into business. It's like 07, 08. And um, that's when I really found out the power of the internet. Yeah. Um, can you speak upon, because that led to you having a family tree. I think you're one of the first people to have office certification for basketball trainers. Yeah. Um, and that, that's what spawned a lot of training that's going on, like the training that's going on right now. Can you speak upon that real quick? Yeah, so YouTube allowed me the platform to, to market it to people around the world. God bless technology. And now you have uh, many, many platforms that uh, you know, people can use. But the marketing is saturated. And, uh, I, I'm grateful I was able to, to show people, hey, you can make basketball uh, coaching a living without working for an NCAA or high school right. team or pro team. You can do it in your communities. Uh, I've been able to create jobs for people. Uh, a guy named Michael Lancaster does a good job with Found Possible. Tyler Ralph was, he was driven one training. Now, those guys lived with me, right. started with me for right. about four years. Cody Topper now, who I still keep in touch with, is, is with the Phoenix Suns. Right, yeah. Just got fired, uh -huh. but he's got, you know, they're going to pay him for two more years and he'll get another job. Mm -hmm. um, Drew Hanlon came to me and wanted me to mentor him. He said, oh, I kind of regret that. I wish I would have taken the time to uh, to spend time with him, but I kind of blew him off because right. I was so busy. Right. Um, but yeah. Uh, you know, social media allows them to do that. Right. So there's a fine line between self-promoting and marketing and being a light. Right. You know, if your light is so bright, people can't see and right. they go away. Right. But your your light wants to bring warmth and heat and life and, and show people uh, a positive way to not only live but to, to play the game, to coach the game, to be involved. Here we are right now, 2019. Are we in a good space as far as basketball training is concerned? Because I, I look at the internet and I see a lot of um, a lot of factions going on, a lot, a lot of disagreements on, on yeah. social media. And obviously it's not necessarily real life stuff on social media that can actually portray real life situations. But are we in a good space right now in basketball training wise? Uh, well, my man Corey Harris, who actually works with me now in China, 
Uh, he's part of that tree that's uh, phenomenal. I mean, he might be one of the best to do this. Uh, he keeps me in check and, and, and keep, keeps my ear on the ground with, with uh, positivity, negativity, right. the drama going on with, with trainers and player development coach. I don't get into it because that's. Call that time stealing. They're just time. They don't help me. Mm -hmm. It's just gossip. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think, yeah, we're in a good state to play the government because if the coaches are educated, if the parents are educated, if the players are educated, they're going to search out the one that teaches the truth. Right. They're going to go out. They're going to go search for uh, coaches that have authenticity and genuineness and uh, can teach the game the right way. Not only teach the players uh, drills, but teach them how to use their skills from the drills so they can go out and make great decisions right. uh, on both ends of the floor. And, and one thing that I think players need to go out and search for, and I think more coaches are doing this, mm -hmm. is number one, they're teaching players how to make uh, decisions based on how to be a good teammate and how to compete. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach Gino, who uh, who's the Hall of Famer, we're at his, his house here, he, he talks about that a lot. He said, you know, young coaches need to teach these players how to compete, mm -hmm. right, and how to be a teammate because he's got to teach them that when they come to the right. program. Right. That's something that high school coaches, middle school coaches, trainers should be doing within the platform of the drill, within the platform and environment of their workout sessions. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is how to teach these, uh, you know, if, if, if the people out there, the customers are, are educated or they need to be educated, they need to go out and find the trainers that are teaching holistically. And if you study trainers, their videos, their blogs, just sit there and, and, and are self-aware, you can tell which ones are teaching the right things from a holistic approach, from a game-like approach, right. and which ones are just trying to be different, right. popular. Right. I think what social media has done to our industry and every industry, it is uh, it's become narcissistic and uh, trainers now are trying to be popular right. Right, instead of competent. Right. You know what I mean? And valuable. Right. They're trying to impress instead of trying to teach importance. Right. I mm -hmm. agree. I agree with that. I think that's what a lot of outrage marketing is going on right now, where they do certain trainers do certain things just to solicit a response from a different from different people sure. just so they can go with that banter back and forth so they basically spread their message. Yeah. Is that banter positive to the team? No, it's not positive, man. I mean, you know let, let's do it in a in a basement, let's do it in a restaurant, mm -hmm. you know, uh, have some food and drinks and then live in do it there. Mm -hmm. It's no different than barbershop talk. It's right. no different than when I, you and I grew up playing in the boys club. Yep. And I, after we skunked your team for nothing, we want to talk about it on the way home or talk about it at 7-Eleven. We, we want to go home. Well, you know what I'm saying. Exactly. You're doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, to do it negatively, uh, you know, it doesn't, it, it makes our uh, industry look clownish. It right. makes our industry look uh, ignorant and arrogant. And then, you know, what I'm trying to do is give respect for our private industry. If you say I was one of the ones that first started, I think Dave Hoppler yep. was doing it before me, Joe Gunazar yep. was doing it at his post-grad academy, but I think what I did is I took it around the globe. Right. I, I made five star, what five star did in a week, I was doing every day. Right. And I, I became not just a specialist or from the school and training, and I did this from grade eight all the way up to the pro. Right. And uh, I still do that, I still right. train young kids to pros, but you know, I think what we need to do is, is present our industry on every platform, in every conversation, in every email, in every place, as professional enough to where the USA Basketball uses some of our intelligence right. and uses some of our value. Uh, FIBA Basketball, mm -hmm. NBA Basketball, all these great basketball organizations, WNBA, mm -hmm. NCAA, and use some of us to form a committee to really try to change the game. But I think some of the things we do, we should have on the foot per se, because and we, we act so immature right. uh, in our passion. Right. I mean, we're passionate. I love all these dudes that get on and have that. Bad. They're passionate. But you need to turn your positive passion, right, into uh, you know positive performance. Right. And if you do that, then they, the paychecks will come. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, I think, like you said, the paychecks will come. I think people are putting the paychecks ahead of the actual performance. Yeah. And that's really, I think, from my standpoint, as I'm getting older, older, older training. Because that's what I see as a downfall to where we are right now. And it's sending a bad message to the youngins that are coming up. Um, because they think that the stuff that we, we would deem as cloud stuff, when, you know, whether it's throwing a tire in the air, catching it flying through the sky, is, is real. And, and, and I think yeah. they're having a hard time distinguishing real and fantasy. Yeah, that's a great point. I think uh, a lot of the, the, the drills now you see where you have tires and hoops and 
parachutes and, and guys catching different objects as they shoot. I think all that maybe can create some, some nervous system build up, some athletic uh, enhancement drills, you know, drills that build up your, your athleticism. All that's good, but don't put that into the uh, compartment of basketball development. Right. That's not basketball development. Right. That's coordination development, right. that's strength and performance right. development. No problem with that. Right. But it's needed. When you go on the basketball court, honestly, you know, a good friend of mine, Mike Procopio, says all you need is a ball and a hoop. Right. Sometimes you don't even need a hoop. Yep. Yep. You know, uh, I use cones, I use tennis balls, I right. use jump ropes. But uh, what I've always tried to do is once the player goes through repetitional drills, or it might be dribbling to a chair, hitting a chair, shooting, going around a chair, then they need to move to situational drills where now they got to read the coach who's blood and flesh and mind. And they got to make decisions. The coach has to be active, right. or you have to have like dummy defenders. But now the player has to make a decision against flesh. Right. Then you add a second player. Now they have to make a decision on spacing and respacing and kicking right. or shooting. That's right. what I'm going to do tonight. Mm -hmm. And then you add a third player. Mm -hmm. Now they got to play with teammates. Now you direct this player to go play with that one. Right. Come set up right. one. So that's kind of the, in short term, short answer, the, the, the layout of really how to develop a player from a skill standpoint. Right. All the other cones and whistles and bells and net balls and punching gloves, like that's that's athletic, that's strength. That's, they're not player development basketball coaches right. in my opinion. Right. But I would, I, I'm not going to get on social media Who said and that? say that, but you asked me a fair question. I right. give you a fair answer. It's not going to Russell Westbrook next question. Uh -huh. I appreciate that. Yeah. We'll edit that out anyway. <laughs> We're here at UConn today and you're going to speak to a series of coaches, or a lot of coaches I should say, regarding um, basketball development, how skill development can enhance um, the basketball a team as a whole. Do you think that's the next step for basketball trainers to get more approaching the team, working side of the team? Yeah, I hope so. I think uh, what you see now is a lot of uh, high school coaches, college coaches, pro coaches. You know, I've made a living off of the players. Mm -hmm. you know, go outside their own program because of the law from the area. Mm -hmm. You know, your voice, whether you great as you are, Phil Jackson, mm -hmm. I'm just going to get tired of you. Right. So he'll you know, go out and get his own personal trainer right. during the summer. Right. Maybe you know, that's what Drew Hanlon does. He's a consultant during the year. He'll come in, be a fresh voice, fresh film, yeah. fresh drills. It's just something fresh. Now, to make sure that athlete and that team stays on path and it stays on target to success, uh, you got to be an extension of that program. Right. you got to be an extension of that coach. So any question or anything uh, with basketball, you got to have the answer. You have to know the basis, the generalities of offensive and defensive system or the ability to watch film quickly and get your development drills and, uh, and curriculum you know, from whatever the coach is running. So I think there's a market for it. It's needed. It helps players. Nothing wrong with it. But the buy-in is, well, you better be passionate. Right. Uh, you better care about the kid more than your brand. Mm -hmm. It's about the team's brand, not your brand. Right. And you better be competent. Right. You better know what the heck you're, you're talking about. about. <laughs> because, uh, you know, everybody has to respond. Our right. industry could go away. Right. We all know we do a good job. Right. Now, as far as... Being responsible. Uh, I would agree with that. That was what What's next for the space, as far as you see it? What's, what's the future going to hold for the space, in addition to working with teams? Is it going to be more social media? Is it going to be more um, online training? I know you do a good job with online training. You have a online training. Yeah. I know that uh, other trainers do also. Is that the, is that the next move? Right, I'm going to give all my secrets to the business man. Okay, let's, let's talk. If yeah. you're stepping outside yourself and looking at yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very confident and free in what I do. You know, I think uh, people need to study technology. Mm -hmm. And wherever technology goes, it's just another platform for education. Mm -hmm. You know, what I do a lot is study the educational world, you know, what does uh, homeschooling do and, and what does the economics department do in getting their information online to people that can't physically go to school. Mm -hmm. So uh, technology is something that we all have to keep studying uh, to deliver our product, whether we teach basketball or science. So that's something that I think people want to make recurrent revenue and you don't want to, because your body can go, right. but you always have your mind. Right. I think, you know, uh, people can make money and, and make a living with their mind. Mm -hmm. They're just self-aware and studying the mind. That, that comes down to a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. you, know, you're, you know, doing something physical affects your mind. Mm -hmm. Keep it healthy. Doing something emotional helps your mind. Doing something spiritual helps your mind. And the other thing is, for me, I made a choice not to stay here most of the time. I'm, I'm going to 
I've seen. It. It's something I've never done in the sense of exclusively now. I'm, I'm either in Europe or, or Asia, mm -hmm. most of the time China. I have a business now in China where I'm a 49% profit share. Mm -hmm. And so uh, nobody's done that. Right. In the industry, I'm pioneering again. Nobody's right. doing uh, a, a real business that they own in China. They not only own it, I'm doing it with one of the greatest who ever played the game. In New York City, Stephen Walker, mm -hmm. and I are part of a company called Stronger Me, and our buddy Corey is over there with him and me. Right. I just hope I can keep Corey because Corey's got a lot of opportunities. Uh -huh. So good. So I think that, I think, you know, whatever everybody's doing over here, think of something different to do, but without sacrificing uh, the integrity of the game and the foundation of the game. So, um, you know, just in a short answer, that, that's kind of what I'm doing. So we met 13 million years ago in New York City. Um, and I think Tyler came down and met with us also. Yeah, Tyler walked in the gym at and introduced himself. At the same time, right? right. Yeah, that, that's the same the, time. And he's got a great story. Right. He's telling that. But I mean, he won't tell the story. Right. But he's got a great story of how he started yes. still training business. Yes. Some of these guys are good about the way business started. And Micah did the same thing. He basically walked, you know, email, sent a video. Uh -huh. Kind of showed up in Hampton, Virginia, saying, you know, teach me about it. Like, you know, <laughs> Stall you know, <laughs> Anakin Skywalker, and, uh, you know, Yoda, and, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I, I'm trying to figure out which one, which one was that. Uh, you know, Obi-Wan, you know, Obi -Wan, you know, Yoda, maybe they think I'm Darth Vader, but uh, that, that, I wish they would tell their story, because it's a great story. Right. Those guys took risks, they had grit, right. and they went to somebody they trusted that was competent and real, right. um, and, and they got after it. Right. And so it gives me validation and confidence that, you know what? You don't always have to agree with everything I'm doing, but what I'm teaching, if you listen, it can help your life. And they're not they are not my puppets. They're real people that, that have learned from me and got a degree, let's say, from me. Right. But they're not the cops. Right. They go out and they're creating their own colleges, right. right. their own value and wealth in their communities and the world. So, right. You know, I'm, I'm happy for them, proud of them. Don't agree with all their methods sometimes. Right. But God bless them. Right. But that was a good segue because Tyler's in New York. You know, he's upstate New York City. Yeah. You, we met in New York City. What's the take on New York City basketball as a whole? Um, from the time we, you were at Slippery Rock, I played at Duquesne University. Duquesne, Duquesne, Duquesne Pennsylvania. Duquesne. 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 and uh, uh, Elizabeth City and uh, Brooklyn. Right. And, and, and from Whitehead, they talked about. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He was good. Played great. He was good. Played great. <laughs> yeah, he was good. Um, is New York City still producing the same type of plan as they did back then? You know, you, you would have to answer that. Uh, I haven't worked out many New York players since. Uh, you would have to answer that more than me. I, I just know that. Uh, okay, I'll ask a question. What's the perception, the current perception of New York City basketball? Oh, I like him. Really? Yeah, I mean, I don't. <laughs> you know, I just, that's not my space or lane right now. Uh -huh. I, I don't know. The fact that I, 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 can tell, I, I can tell you when I was. Uh, when Nike would send me to train on train the Gauchos. Mm -hmm. Uh, Riverside Hawks. Mm -hmm. We had all the New York City kids coming to Nike and the coaches we would talk. Back then, they, they, they weren't coachable, but they had unbelievable potential. Mm -hmm. They just had to be harnessed like a black stallion. Mm -hmm. uh, many couldn't shoot, mm -hmm. but many weren't afraid of nothing. Mm -hmm. So you take them anyway, even though they couldn't shoot, they weren't coachable because right? they were just so daggone tough right. and they loved the game. Right. They had grit, passion, yes. and toughness. And they could play through all the other stuff. Yeah, and, right. and eventually they, they would buy into whatever coach recruited them because the coach and the New York City kid had the same love for right. game. Right, same passion. And so, you know, love is, the uh, game of basketball is kind of fun and gender free. If right. you have that same love, eventually y'all be going to make it out and be successful. I, I think the fact that you don't, you haven't heard from New York City basketball sometimes yeah. is. Uh, you tell me what's the, maybe I can learn something on the podcast. I think I think that um where um it's the pulse of New York City kids. It's not as it once was, um, but it's still viable. Um, we have many ranked players in New York City and New York State, but they're just not going to school in New York City and New York State. They're going to school elsewhere for whatever reasons. Um, but they're still pretty good game players throughout New York State, New York State. So but the fact that you're not hearing about them is kind of sad to us in New York City because I think that we're not the same that we once were. Yeah, I mean I don't I don't I don't get a lot of messages from New York City players. Yeah, yeah, no. you know, I get I get messages from all over the world, but not many from New York City. Right. That's the mecca. Right. Maybe y'all need to hire St. John's, uh, Mark Jackson, at St. John's. 
Yeah. Well, we just hired uh, Mike Anderson. Mike Anderson from yeah. Arkansas. Uh, yeah. So he hopefully he get the opportunity to be yeah. there. Yeah, that's something great. Coach a few times. That's great. Yeah. Uh, before we go, uh, pre drafts. Uh, what's your take on pre drafts, and um, how would one as an aspiring trainer yeah. get involved in that in that type of aspect of the training component? Yeah, that's one of the most fun events that I do, mm-hmm. and uh, I can't do it this year. I'm in China another few months. So, uh, but it's it's great. It's fun. You change not only players' lives, but they buy in for you know for two three months and change their families' lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terry Rozier, Tyler Johnson, Wilson O'Neal were just some guys we had down in Florida with Cody, mm-hmm. and then you know we, we thought we really helped them mm-hmm. uh, get that that second contract. Mm-hmm. And for Tyler, he's changed his kids' kids' lives. Right. Um, how do you how do you go about it? Well, you, you gotta you gotta market your Instagram. You gotta market your YouTube, you gotta uh, just cold call agents and then go to the Final Four and go to uh, the NBA Summer League and, and go to these combines. Right. PIT in Chicago, I think uh, they used to have it in Orlando and, and, and Phoenix or LA. Go to the Summer League, but just search out these agents and say, Y'all can help you guys out. You gotta be able to work for free right, right. for a few times. Y'all can make a lot of money, even if you're a vet at NBA Projects. It's not about that, it's just about. You know, American Idol meets basketball. Right. It's about changing lives, and then uh, you have you have the credibility of helping this kid and this kid, and now you can tell your story to every of your other players. But uh, it, it's fun, and you know, I mean, it's not about how young or old you are. It's like, all right, you have the confidence and information that a point guard needs and a two guard needs. What does a three need to do? Get a contract for the league. What does a five need to do? And keep them safe. Keep saying, so get them ready for those workouts, man. It's, it's nothing like it, man. It's awesome. Right. What's the most important skill in the current economy in basketball? You need to be in basketball. Uh, mentally or physically? Physically. Let me get to the middle. Uh, most important skill, I would they would create off the drill. Uh, mentally? Mentally. Uh, how to make good decisions on and off the court. Oh, uh, that's it for you because you have to run. And I got to run, man. I got to go get a sweat. I'm 46 now, man. I think when we met, I was like 35, 34. Yeah. Now you still look safe, man. Thank you. We had Dan and Baker. What a pleasure. The Godfather's of basketball training. Thank you for the opportunity to stop by. Fathers, man. I died. All right, all right. Founding fathers. I hit 60. No, founding fathers. My father, man. I ain't a grandfather yet. So. Uh, back not, yet. Just, not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Nine, five, and two. Hope not, too. Yeah, a long time. Back. The world's getting crazy now. It's really We're out of here.